Animation is the most free and creative art form employed by filmmakers. It has the ability to create entire worlds and universes from scratch, and immerse the audience in these made-up creations. Yet, animation is oftentimes brushed aside, considered just for kids and made of fluff with no actual nuance. This perception of an entire art form can be true for some examples, but it fails the medium as a whole. Animation, whether it's traditional, hand-drawn, CGI, or stop-motion, has the ability to tell believable stories in fantastical settings. And it can do those stories justice in terms of the narrative as well. This paradox of animation, as a kids' genre and as a creatively liberal format, is best seen when considering American animation with its foreign counterparts. Take Claude Barras's French claymation film, My Life is a Zucchini. My Life is a Zucchini follows the young Icar, although he prefers the nickname Zucchini, as he accidentally kills his mom to escape her drunken rage and becomes an orphan. Oh. Zucchini! Yeah, not a totally cheery story. But what Barras and screenwriter Celine Sciamma does with this tragic story is mix Zucchini's childhood innocence with his rather sad circumstances and creates a nuanced and authentic portrait of an orphan. And this complex narrative is perfectly shown through the unique use of mise-en-scene and sound recording that Barras employed in his film. Claymation creates a unique cross-section of animation in real life since the objects used are all real items employed to create a whimsical movie setting. Unlike hand-drawn animation, stop motion uses real-life objects and relies on traditional cinematography and lighting to capture the scene, which creates an authentic feeling, even if the movie couldn't be farther from real life. For example, clouds in a 2D animation are often overlooked, seamlessly blending into the rest of the movie, but in a claymation, you can't help but notice the real-life texture of the clouds. In fact, most claymations use cotton to achieve the effect of clouds or smoke. Throughout time, claymation has used, well, clay. Kind of a given, I know. This look creates texture that injects life into a film, and the use of real clay creates a timeless look in these movies. In My Life as a Zucchini, however, Boris decided to break out of the mold for two reasons. One, to streamline the claymation process, which infamously takes a lot of time and money, and two, to create a unique look for the cast of orphans, each of whom carry sad stories. On the material side of things, Barras and his puppet maker, Gregory Bossard, played with different materials in the pre-production phase, and ultimately came up with the 3D printed models painted with a textured effect to create lightweight models that were easy to animate without losing that clay-like look. Barras certainly employs the idea of show don't tell in his films. And this even shows with Zucchini as he writes to the cop using drawings of her letters. There is perhaps no better way to direct a movie in this visual format than to use claymation, where every single detail is purposefully put together. It is with this detail-oriented mise-en-scene that creates the powerful emotions that drive the movie. Burroughs also derails from the clay look for one specific aspect of the characters, the eyes. He made the eyes purposefully glossy in order to help convey the complex emotions these kids have. Barras also made the heads of the characters bigger than proportion would account for, in order for them to be able to convey emotion, even in wide shots. Oh, oh, oh no, it's hey, look. Oh. The greatest example of this comes from a powerful moment in the film, when all of the orphans look longingly at a mother and a son in a wide shot that zooms out. The decision to look less realistic was made simultaneously with the decision to convey as much emotion as possible, which creates the paradox of an unrealistic design that conveys realism narratively and visually. Another aspect of the mise-en-scene that Barras employed was the coloring of his characters. Because this is an animated film, the freedom to design each character from scratch gave a lot of creative leeway, and it shows. The overly red nose and ears, with the blue sunken eyes and shock of blue hair, creates both a childlike fantastical look to Zucchini, while also giving his face inherent sadness, as the blue under eyes denote. The other orphans share the uniqueness of their respective coloring, 
and even characters like Ahmed and Beatrice were intentionally designed with both respect to the whimsical look and their ethnic backgrounds. The emphasis on conveying emotion through looks, and not words or actions, was a directorial and aesthetic approach to conveying the nuances of this story, and this style is often lost in traditional western animation. Take Cinderella, for example. Cinderella, at its core, is a movie about an orphan living in an abusive home, yet the animation in this movie was used primarily to tell a story with fantastical elements while keeping the more normal components conventional. Instead of capitalizing on the unlimited ability to design Cinderella and visually show her tragedy or any sort of authentic emotional trauma that she most definitely feels, this movie only employs the limitless boundaries of animation in order to make animals talk and pumpkins turn into carriages. The movie is painted over with a glossy filter, most likely a decision made in order to keep the movie feeling PG and family friendly. But it's with this decision that the movie fails narratively. It isn't a movie that people often find themselves rewatching, and let's not even mention the failure of its live action remake. I forgive you. Because Barris doesn't shy away from showing the deep emotions, both narratively and visually, he does a great job of telling a story that is nuanced, relatable, and entertaining. He expertly mixes comedy and drama to create a delightful film, and he does this without straying away from the reality that there are kids like Zucchini all around the world. Another way in which he maintained the realism of Zucchini's story, and the stories of other orphans, was by changing the way that the voice actors were recorded. Barras wanted to create an authentic story, and he did so by casting children that fit the personalities of each character in the film, regardless of acting background. In order to make a realistic environment, Barras had the kids actually act out the scenes as they were recording. This method of voice recording is vastly different to the traditional recording of individual actors separately and within the confines of a recording studio. By using this technique, Barras and his animators were also able to animate the actions of the kids with the realism, seeing how each kid moves as they were acting out the scenes in real life. This non-traditional voice recording not only lended itself to authentic and great voice acting, oh boy. but it also guided the choices behind the blocking and choreography of the characters. My Life as a Zucchini is an independent movie, with a budget of $8 million and a US box office of only $300,000. Yep, only $300,000. But while My Life as a Zucchini wasn't a big Disney blockbuster, it garnered critical acclaim. Nominated for Best Animated Film in the 2017 Oscars, Barras' film made waves for its beautiful handling of childhood trauma and by being an animation that was unafraid to delve into darker and more nuanced subject matter. De l'enfance, euh, si on en parle avec délicatesse, si on cherche à, à montrer que les enfants sont, sont aussi des êtres sensibles, intelligents, ça parle aussi à tout le monde et on est très vite plongé euh, aussi euh, dans des émotions et, et dans notre propre enfance. But when competing against the U.S. Zootopia, this quaint French film stood no chance. This isn't to discredit Zootopia, which is a good movie in itself. But when looking at these two films side by side, it's hard to see how they could even compete in the same caliber of film. With My Life as a Zucchini dedicated to emotional complexity and authenticity, pioneering new techniques in the mise-en-scene and sound recording of claymation, and Zootopia, with a notable $150 million budget, animating Shakira as a gazelle. <laughs>